Today I will be ranking the 8 TV Masters of Doctor Who. Firstly, I know that there have been Masters in books and audio, such as Alex McQueen in Dark Eyes 3, but I'm only ranking the TV Masters, so Roger Delgado, Peter Pratt, Jeffrey Beavers, Anthony Ainley, Eric Roberts, Derek Jacobi, John Sim and Michelle Gomez. Also, I'm only ranking them on their TV appearances, so this puts Peter Pratt, Jeffrey Beavers, Eric Roberts and Derek Jacobi at a disadvantage, as they only had one appearance each. Also, I'm not putting Michelle Gomez lower than you might have done because she's a woman. Just wanted to get that straight. Number 8, John Sim. Now, his appearance... It, his appearance in The Doctor Falls was okay, and The End of Time was quite good, but the sound of drums and The Last of the Time Lords were so awful that his, other, that his other appearances don't make up for it. The problem with the problem with that was The Master was too menacing, and it was very hard to think of as the same character as the others. Number 7, Rod Eric Roberts. He's so low because of the same reason Paul McGann was so low on my Doctor's list. He only had one major appearance, and that was too American for Doctor Who. He wasn't awful, but he wasn't that good either. I think the main reason he wasn't as good as some of the others is that he hadn't watched Doctor Who before he got the part. I didn't see any of the previous Masters. Number 6, Peter Pratt. It became hard here because everyone from now on was good. However, he only had one appearance. He wasn't bad, but he wasn't brilliant, so he's down at number six because he didn't leave a strong impression. Number five, Derek Jacobi. Again, not bad, but he only had a one-minute appearance, and whilst that was brilliant, it wasn't the best ever, which meant he went above everyone for a one-minute showcase. Number four, Michelle Gomez. I said earlier that I'm not ranking her this low because she's a woman. I think she was great, but not brilliant enough to go be above the three best from Classic Who. This is mainly because I felt Stephen Moffat didn't really know Classic Who that well, so, Miss so Missy felt too much like Durrani, who, for those who don't know, is a time lady who was a villain in two Classic Who stories, The Mark of Durrani, Sixth Doctor, and she went in league with the Master and Time and the Rani, which is the Seventh Doctor's first story. Also, this is the Rani, a Time Lady, not Rani from the Sarah Jane Adventures. Number three, Anthony Ainley. He was the master for the longest, from the end of Tom Baker's run to the end of Sylvester McCoy's run, and he was so good. The main problem with him going on for so long was that he kept coming back and fading, which took away a bit of the scare when you saw he was coming back. Number two, Jeffrey Beavers. He only had one appearance, though, but that was brilliant. He is the same incarnation as Peter Pratt and Roger Delgado, but I felt Beavers was so much better than Peter Pratt. So, number one, Roger Delgado. One thing that proved this master was so good was that he was the villain for 9 out of 13 stories between Terror of the Autons and Frontier in Space, which is 47 episodes out of 65, which is nearly 4 series worth of New Who, with only him as the villain. Another thing is that, unlike with Anthony Ainley, you always thought that, oh, you've beaten the imminent threat, but he's got away and will be back, probably even more powerful. Also, his relationship with the Third Doctor is brilliant. You can tell that they were once friends, and that the Master is saying that the Doctor used to be like him. In the Master's first story, when he thinks he's beaten the Doctor, he says, I shall miss you, Doctor. I have so few worthy opponents. And lots of times he offers to share conquest of the universe with him. There's a story when the Master's TARDIS is stuck in Axos, and the Time Lords have trapped the Doctor on Earth. They worked together to try and escape in the Doctor's TARDIS. Also, he was supposed to be the only Master. He was the 13th incarnation and was going to die saving the Doctor, but the Doctor then still had to regenerate, like in the end of time. But then, Roger Delgado died in a car crash, so they dropped that and brought him back. Then again, and again, and again, and again. Whoa. I've written 22 lines for Roger Delgado, 12 more than anyone else. 
Everyone's welcome to their own opinion, of course, but anyone who doesn't put him first is mad, and anyone who doesn't put him in the top two must have some serious brain damage.